lot of people go online and Google whatever they're trying to do and find a script and go like, how do I make that into an app if I want to with the inputs and outputs? And it's honestly not very difficult. So if I make a new policy and call it whatever right now, the first thing you would want to do is run script, right? And then you copy paste your script. So what I usually tell people to do first and foremost, if your script doesn't work in PowerShell ISC, or in um, it doesn't work in Visual Studio Code or Notepad++ if you use that for debugging, whichever one. If it doesn't work properly in those environments, it will not work in Automation Manager. So don't bother to upload it and test it because it won't work. Once you're very comfortable with it, copy paste your script here, right? So let's see, I open up VS Code and my camera's gonna obviously freeze because I use my ISC. Okay, all right, where did everything go? This went over here. Now, if I go into here, I don't want to do that. Okay, so let's say I got this uh, PowerShell script where this one adds a SQL login to a machine, right? Super easy. My username, my password, my SQL instance, this is the password I'm creating, and I'm then adding a SQL login. Somebody wanted to do that, asked me to help create it. I said, why not? So let's say I have this. First and foremost, test it. If you know it works and you're comfortable with it, come here, paste it, no, no change whatsoever. Leave the parameters hard-coded, leave everything the way it is, and run. If it still works there, you're in good shape. If it doesn't, there might be some incompatibility, there might be something wrong, there may be a ton of different reasons. Troubleshoot that, take a quick look, figure out what's wrong, it'll tell you which lines is failing and whatever. Troubleshoot and go from there. Once you're comfortable, the next thing is to add our input parameters. So in our case, we need a username, a password, and an instance name. So input, and then we're gonna say end user, username for SQL, and then, uh, you know what, um, mark, whatever. And then in password, password, password. Password cannot be defaulted for security reasons, which is important. And then instance name, or well, actually it's a SQL instance name, and then it will be, I don't know, MSQL server, whatever, okay. And then, okay, once we have done the parameters here, I want to come here and do them again. So I'm going to do add, and I'm going to do in script user. And because it doesn't matter, I put the same name in both, because who cares? Then I use my little chain link to link it. So the, the input of the policy will be fed to the script right here. Then in script password, and then that's password field link it to my password and then finally in sql instance uh, in sc instance sorry you'll notice that i made the name slightly different in the version that's in the input just to avoid any conflict it, i tend to find that easier that's a me thing but do whatever works for you once you have done your inputs here and you've linked them and everything's good you can then come here and the system is nice enough to offer you any inputs and any outputs that are there. So all I gotta do is swap that back. Now, what I usually recommend is keep the old value in common like that. The password obviously should not be there in plain text, but because it's just a dummy password, we'll leave that in common. So you hashtag something, it becomes, a, anything after that is a comment. So super easy like that. So now what I've done is I've substituted these that way. Now I could have just taken the variables and put them everywhere in text, but this makes troubleshooting easier. If I ever had to take this, go back to VS Code and do some testing, all I gotta do is paste it, remove this, and I'm ready to test again in a matter of seconds. Whereas if I modified the variables in, in, the, in the code and did things, it becomes a lot harder for me to troubleshoot. So I tend to find that easier for me. Then you save that, the only thing left, run, fill the blanks, test it. If it still works, then upload it to RMM and start using it. The main, main, main benefit, absolutely hands down the best benefit of using that technology this way is that by doing this, this will allow you to do input parameters more granularly. Uh, so that is something that you can 